Hello. So, um, yeah, something <coughs> that might be interesting for people that are playing around with their planar magnetics, magnet pens, and subs. Uh, and to get the idea of what's going on, I'll make some drawings. So it's that time of the year. I'll make some drawings. So, so first we go to microphones. Um, yes, so most microphones, or I'll go to the basics. There are different ways of doing it, but I'll, I'll go back to the, the very basic version is all microphones, uh, there are many types of patterns in a microphone, like an omnidirectional figure of eight, which is like a dipole loudspeaker. Uh, an omni is like a closed box speaker, for instance. You see the analogy, uh, they're kind of the same. They act the same. Uh, then you have like cardiote, uh, cardiote and supercardiote and um, well, then you have shotgun, etc. But these are a little bit different. Uh, yeah, so usually a polar pattern is drawn in like a circle. So I'll draw a oop, circle. And then let's say this is zero degree, this is 180, uh, 90, and 270. So you got a circle and then we're going to draw in the polar pattern of the microphone. Now we have only two basic ones, which is Omni and figure of eight. Omni is a circle and a figure of eight is like two circles or an eight. Who would have guessed? Mm. I could have prepared this, but I didn't. Is this smaller? Yes. Okay. So there you go. We draw an omni, and it's no surprise, it's a circle. <laughs> so if we look at the polar pattern, in, in the best case, it will receive sound from every direction equally. Now, this is not completely true because it depends on the size of the microphone, uh, if, it, if it will allow to get uh, the higher frequencies from all directions. But for now, we'll just assume we have a perfect microphone and it will. So it has a polar pattern that looks like a circle. Now I'll do the figure of eight just because it's not gonna be nicer. Figure of eight looks like this. And then we have zero, 180, 90 and 270. So, I, I did draw it a little bit small. But you can see at a dipole loudspeaker or a... <laughs> figure of eight microphone or speaker. Stop it. <laughs> okay. Uh, sound coming from 90 degree will end up here, exactly where there is a null. So it, do it doesn't pick it up, or at least not much at all. Same goes for the 270 degree, but it will on the zero degree and 180 degree, except that at 180, it's out of phase. So this lob picks up sound, but it's out of phase compared to this lob. Now all microphones I said are made out of these two. So if you combine them, you got a, card a cardio uh, microphone. And that's because this is out of phase. This circle is interesting. You will end up with something like, well, I can draw it here. You Maybe I'll Draw both in there. So we got the Omni. No, I'll do it differently. 
So assume this eight, we lay it down on this circle of the Omni. This part is out of phase. So what will happen is that, let's say a circle here is out of phase. It's a bit exaggerated, but... So this will be removed from the polar. Now it doesn't look like a cardioid yet because it's more like rounded off. But this now is a cardioid pattern. It has, <coughs> in theory, zero input from 180 on the back. And uh, it has uh, all the input from the front. Well, it's actually, yeah, so it's not like a gain. Well, you have two mics, so it sort of is. Here it adds up, and here it gets removed, and then you get this p pattern. And the same goes for loudspeakers. Uh, and what is cool is that if you have, have a planar magnetic dipole loudspeaker, and this also works for dipole woofers, and you combine it with a closed box subwoofer, for instance, and you put them uh, on top of each other, this will happen. So if we just turn it a little bit like this, at zero degree, we have both playing together. At 180 degree, they're nulling out. Not completely because there's a lot of room reflections, etc. Uh, now, in a normal figure of A, you have like almost nothing coming from the sides, which is can be interesting. But in this case, it will emit some sound on the sides. And the reason is because the Omni is like this, but it doesn't get like completely nullified. It's just minus these dips. I'm explaining this uh, quite hard maybe. But you will end up with a, they call it sometimes monopole for instance. You have output on the front and hardly any output on the back. Now hardly, as I said, there's room reflections, etc. So that's not completely true. But if you have a small room and you have to put them near a wall, this, this, this method might work. So if you have a subwoofer that can play a little bit higher and you play it together with your magnet pen or any other planar magnetic or dipole speaker, it doesn't matter what kind of, um, it will remove uh, a part at least, and in theory much more, from the back wave. So it will reflect less against the back wall. And that could be interesting. So I made a few measurements and I did a very uh, rough. So instead of moving the mic back and forth, I'll just swap one speaker out of phase and you get the result you would get normally. At least, I mean, the difference between the front where they both play together and the back where the dipole is out of phase, but the Omni is still in phase and in phase and out of phase together are, should be nothing. So I'm not sure if that's clear, but I think the measurement will show you that uh, you can remove, like, I'll have to check that. So um, at least several amount of the bees on the backside reflecting against the wall. That could be very interesting. Um, yeah, the only thing is your woofer has to be able to play a little bit higher, your sub. And of course, do you want to have like the one-on-one -on -one, uh, sound of the subwoofer and the planar magnetic? Now, for lower frequencies, I think that is not a big deal. I mean, planar magnetics are not known for the best low end. So you could use it in the lower regions. And besides that, a subwoofer, after a while, uh, doesn't do high frequencies. That's one thing. But also, uh, if it's not able to wrap around the subwoofer, this effect is gone. That's why I did the microphone analogy. If the capsule of the mic, or in this case, the driver, is 
bigger than the wavelength of the frequency, it will not wrap around and you will not have this effect. So in the measurement, I measured it uh, higher on purpose. So you can see it works, 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 and then it stops working because it's not wrapping around the loudspeaker to create an omni-directional loudspeaker, which is easy to do in the low end and, uh, well, not so much in the higher frequencies. All these things would work like perfectly if every driver was infinite small, like a point source or like this screw, the point of the screw, which is of course never gonna happen. Uh, it's even in microphones hard to do it completely perfect, but let alone in loudspeakers because they're like a zillion times bigger. Anyhow, I thought that was uh, quite interesting. Uh, I know monopoles work like this, but I never actually tried it. So it might be that someone had a subwoofer and used it with a planar magnetic and crossed it so they do not play together. But in some cases, it might be interesting to just let them play together, let's say 50 hertz to uh, 200 hertz or, or 300 hertz, I don't know. Uh, so you get this effect, so you have less room, at least from your back wall, at least. So I thought I'll share, maybe that's interesting. So blue is where they add up, and is the front of the loudspeaker, and orange is like the back side of the loudspeaker. Now the difference is not insanely huge, in this case it's 9 dBs, which is still quite a lot by the way, but, uh, and there are some weird artifacts, and I think that's because well, there is still a wall. So in theory, of course, it, you do this in a open space and then you see actually what is going on uh, when doing this and you have uh, less room interfering with this whole idea. Now in my case, uh, the woofer was standing on the ground and if I measured like halfway the panel, the effect would be slightly less. So at higher frequencies mostly. So yeah, this could work, uh, but only for lower frequencies, but it's still a cool thing. I, I mean, you can try it uh, if it works out for you, if you have like subwoofers anyways. So if you want to try this, do not put the subwoofers a meter away, but just put them as close to the magnet pan as possible to make this effect work. Because ideally they will be at the same, exactly same spot, which is of course physically not possible. Yeah, I hope you like my uh, insanely ugly drawings, but yeah. see you around. I might try it if I have two subs. I only have one right now, but I might in the future try this with two subs and see how that, if that makes any difference in the sound. Yeah, one last thing. So this is a ratio of figure of eight dipole and omnidirectional of uh, one, one on one or 0.5 plus 0.5, that's more like it, 0.5 omni, 0.5 figure of A. Now, if you adjust this ratio, uh, it becomes more like beaming, which can be interesting, but there will be a lob on the backside as well, since the part, a part of the figure, so if you add more, figure of eight, that is. A part of the figure of eight is not canceled and that creates a lob on the back side. So now it's completely not clear anymore, but that's what it is. <coughs> See ya.